Hey guys, it's Matt Pittman and welcome to another episode of Traeger Kitchen Live. You guys are here in my outdoor kitchen in Waxahachie, Texas. I think it's probably the first day that it hasn't rained in like a month. So it's beautiful weather. It's actually quite warm here in Texas and I'm excited to be back with you guys. I haven't done this uh, since uh, the Super Bowl. So it's been a minute, uh, been a minute to be in front of folks and we're excited uh, leading into uh, Memorial Day weekend. I know lots of you guys will be outside cooking this weekend. Um, this past week, I heard someone say, this is the official kickoff to grilling season, and that made me chuckle. Um, we never stop grilling here at Meat Church, so I hope this weekend is not your kickoff into grilling season, or we need to talk. But a little bit about me and Meat Church. Um, I'm one of Traeger's barbecue pros. Um, I do lots of live events uh, for Traeger. A lot of you hopefully know who we are. Um, but we're, we're known mostly for two things. One, our barbecue products, all of our seasonings that a lot of Traeger, uh, Traeger owners use. And we're also known for our videos on our YouTube channel. Um, you can find us at Meat Church on Instagram. Hopefully you follow us by now. If not, you should take a moment to do that right now. Anyway, super excited tonight. Uh, this is, we're calling it our Texican edition. At least that's what my team is calling it. Uh, tonight's menu, uh, which we're going to make completely within this hour, uh, is a very Texas-like menu. Um, everything we're doing is very near and dear to my heart, uh, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So what are we cooking? Well, we are making uh, tequila lime chicken, which is kind of the star of the show. Uh, I think the folks at Traeger don't believe that I can cook anything other than brisket or beef ribs, so they're going to challenge me to show you how to cook chicken. Uh, then we're going to make guacamole, which is something, smoked guacamole, uh, which is something we make here at the Meat Church house uh, literally every week. So um, extremely important to me and my family. And hey, if you are on keto, avocados are good. So people often ask me, how am I not 400 pounds given all the food I put out on Meat Church Instagram? Well, I eat a lot of avocados. Uh, and then we're going to be making smoked ranch water, which is what I'm drinking here. Don't be fooled. This is not just a bottle of Topo Chico. This has a healthy amount of tequila in it. In fact, I took a swig right before we went live and I got a little heavy handed with the tequila, but that's okay. I have a celebrity in the house today. Uh, my buddy, Michael Letchworth, Sam Jones Barbecue in North Carolina, flew in today. Uh, we're actually cooking a hog out at our lake house this weekend and Michael's coming in to help us, we're going to build a cinder block pit and get after that tomorrow. So he's going to be answering, or he's going to be reading off your questions live event. If you have questions, please put them in the comments below. This is on Facebook as well as YouTube. Um, throw your questions out there. They're going to be, uh, Michael's going to be relaying those to me. I'll be answering those through the entire hour. I'm really trying to cook this together with you guys. So fire away. Uh, if I don't answer your question within this hour, um, I will try to go back and answer. I usually go back to the post. These events end up becoming a post on Facebook and obviously live on YouTube. And so I try to go back on those platforms and answer um, a lot of questions. So they only give me the ones that are like really relevant. Like you're probably wondering like, how do I get the best hair and barbecue? And if you ask that question, I'll tell you, well, I condition it with beef tallow. Uh, so anyway, any questions that you have are fair game tonight. Sound good? All right. Well, let's get started. We've got a lot to do, so we need to get to cooking here. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring in some chicken thighs. And I'm prepping on, uh, just so you guys know, you'll always get asked this. These are rosewood blocks. This is my signature cutting board on the bottom, and this is a topper that we do raw prep on on the top. So since we're dealing with raw chicken, um, I'm going to prep the chicken on this board, and then I'll get rid of it, and we can do everything else on the, on the board underneath it. Got lots of gloves. I'm going to go with these atomic blue ones for the chicken prep. So let's talk about chicken. By the way, before I get into this, I failed to mention a couple things. Uh, Traeger and Yeti are doing an amazing giveaway, both partners of mine. There we go. Go back on uh, Traeger's Instagram a few days ago, and there's a, there's a photo of this actual Traeger Timberline 1300 with this amazing, sexy right arm. Uh, and they're doing it, like I said, a great giveaway with Yeti. So go to that post and look at the details. Got to have something fun to do. Um, and hey, I'm even wearing, wearing my new Traeger Color G-Shock just for y'all tonight. So it's all about the details. Let's get this chicken going. So tonight we are doing skinless, bone-in 
thighs. And I've got quite a few prepped, but I'm going to show you how I did that. Now, you could prepare this chicken dish with breasts or thighs, but if you know right, thighs are where it's at. Um, the debate between breast meat or thigh meat in my house is like a holy war. My wife won't eat the dark meat, but this is where the flavor is. And I often say my way is not the right way. Well, my way is the right way on this. Thighs are where the flavor is at. Well, here's what we did tonight. You could just season these and go just like they are with the skin on. We've actually removed the skin from a bunch of these thighs, and I've trimmed them up just a little bit, so I thought I would show you um, what I did. And you certainly could do this with, um, um, with a boneless thigh, but I cook a lot of things with a bone in because it kind of holds together better. It holds its shape. Some people like the flavor of meat around a bone. Um, so I'm just going to pull most of the skin off here with my hand, and then I'll use a knife where necessary. Actually, I could get most of that off there. Can I show you that there? Pull this one off. You guys fire your questions in while I kind of get this rolling. All right. So we, skin comes off pretty easy, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay these out, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. You don't have to go this far again, but I don't like taking a sharp boning knife here, and I don't like this kind of nasty fat out here. So I'll just kind of scrape it down. I'm not preparing a competition chicken thigh where you've got to remove everything, but I like to square these up. Um, so I'm actually just cutting right here where I make them square. I'll tell you up front, you don't have to trim anything. Everything you trim off is something you paid for, so you get to decide how much you want to trim. But I'm just removing the excess fat and just the edge of the meat just to square these up and make them nice and pretty. Um, you eat with your eyes first, and uh, I like to kind of make things pretty. Plus this fat that's underneath here, is it really makes for an unpleasant bite, so I just kind of scrape it down. And this flattens the chicken out so that you can really see the excess that hangs off. Slice it off, same thing on the other side. Skin and fat, just not a great bite. Matt, I got a couple questions for you, if you're ready. Questions, questions are in, go for it. Do you use a separate cutting board for chicken? Do I use a separate cutting board for chicken? Absolutely, that's definitely what we're doing. Um, raw prep with poultry, you don't want to cross-contaminate. So I will either do this. I'm, I'm going to strike this board out of the set here after we finish our prep. Um, but I also love to use disposable cutting boards. By the way, I'm going to, while we're talking, I'm going to lay these out uh, bone side up so I can get some seasoning on them while we're talking. Um, I also love using disposable cutting boards like a dollar fifty a piece great for travel and um, tailgating and camping and things like that uh, but you definitely want to use a separate surface if you don't have a separate cutting board just put down aluminum foil or, or something of that nature while we're in this stage right here is there a reason why you like taking the skin off is there a reason why I like taking the skin off uh, well the question kind of um, wonders if it is related to calories. <laughs> That's funny. Question is, is taking the skin off related to calories? I'm going to tell you, I'm famous for saying I ain't here to help you lose weight. Um, I'm here to make the food taste good, and I'm not going to lie, I love chicken skins. Um, you know, I didn't air dry these out or put any corn starch in these to help crisp the skin up, so I'm just going to season both sides of the meat and ultimately glaze it. I think it'll present better and maybe be a little easier to eat, but you certainly could leave the skins on. Like, I love chicken skin. Uh, while I'm waiting on more questions, today, uh, by the way, every recipe today uh, is in the Traeger app. If you don't have the Traeger app, you have to download it. It has recipes from all the Traeger pros as well as the amazing culinary team at Traeger. Nobody in outdoor cooking has the culinary team that Traeger does, um, and all these steps will be in there. I will deviate slightly on the recipes. Um, I'm going to use my own seasoning, so I'm using our Dia de la Fajita, which is salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and a little bit of citrus, and it's great on chicken. Uh, so that's what we're going with today. And I didn't open it all the way. I, I took my glove off to have a clean hand, um, and I didn't open this bottle all the way, so I'm doing that real quick. While you're doing this, Matt, is there anything that you typically use to um, help as a binder when it comes to seasoning chicken? Really good question. So do I ever use a binder for chicken? Yes, sometimes I do. And in fact, that's why I have this olive oil out here. A binder is just a wet agent to help seasoning adhere to meat. But people that follow me know that I'm all about the minimal 
steps needed to make amazing food. Um, you can use a binder. I don't think you always need to. This chicken, as I looked at it, was really wet, and I felt like this seasoning would adhere. See, I picked that up and no seasoning fell off of it. I felt like the seasoning would, ad would adhere just fine without um, the olive oil, so I went without it. Same thing applies if you're making pork shoulder, ribs, you might slather those with mustard. Uh, here in Texas, obviously a lot of briskets. Uh, some people put pickle juice on them, some people put a little mustard. Uh, I usually don't put anything unless I feel the need to, but I, I felt like this would adhere without it, so I went without it today. More questions? How long um, before cooking do you typically take them out of the fridge? Are they room tip when they go in the grill? How, the question is, how long do I pull this meat out before I put it on the Traeger? I'm going to answer that while I'm putting them on the Traeger. We've got our Traeger Timberline set up today at 375 degrees. I'm running hickory pellets today. Uh, other great choices would be pecan, a um, little less smoky if you want a, a even lighter smoke, alder, maple, or fruit wood. Um, but I like my stuff smoky. Um, hickory is personal to me as well. I grew up with hickory in the south, so I, I think it's the number one all-purpose pellet in my opinion, so we're cooking hickory. Um, so, and I've taken the top shelf out of the timberline. I'm gonna handle this stuff with my glove hand. I'm gonna, it doesn't matter if you go meat up or meat down, but I'm gonna go meat down for now. I've taken the top rack out of the timberline. Ooh, and you can hear that sizzle. So this stuff came right out of the fridge and I prepped it and cooked it. I never let chicken sit outside of the fridge on purpose necessarily. I don't think you need to. Uh, if I was cooking a big cut like a tri-tip or something, I might, I might set it out at ambient temperature for an hour or two if I have it. Same thing with a steak. And when you speak of meat, uh, you're referring to the side that the skin was on, right? Correct. Meat up meaning this side. And this doesn't matter. You could, we're going to flip these halfway through the cook. We're cooking these probably close to 30 minutes, 15 minutes a side. Uh, with the grill being hot right now, I'm putting them meat side on the grate so that I can get some grill marks in that char, which is flavor to me. Look at this pretty new 1300. Shout out to my friend Amanda at Traeger who realized that the other 1300 I had, which was like the first 1300 in North America, was getting some age on it. So this one's basically, it's on its maiden TV voyage right now. And since you shut the lid there, so this next question is how long are you cooking it for and what temp? So we're at 375. Yeah, how long are we cooking this for? So we're at 375. Um, and I think, I've, so you need an instant read thermometer. Number one tool in your cooking arsenal after you buy your Traeger is, this is a Thermapin MK4. A uh, little birdie tells me they're about to come out with a new model that's even better than this. But uh, instant read thermometer reads in, you know, three or four seconds. This is how you nail um, the internal temperature or desired doneness of meat. This is how you keep from overcooking your chicken or anything else that you're cooking. So we'll temp it a few times along the way. I'm going to check 15 after. Uh, I'm going to check them again here in 15 minutes. So we're, I'm thinking these will take about 30 minutes, but that's not really important. What's important is the temperature. You want to cook them to 165 degrees. Um, with dark meat, you can actually go beyond that, and it won't really hurt it. It won't dry it out but we're gonna pull them between 160 and 165. Uh, I actually like to go about 160 on thighs, make sure they're nice and juicy is my own preference. Um, we're going to make um, our tequila lime sauce uh, while those are cooking, and then we're gonna move into the guac and, and go from there. Man, I poured a lot of tequila in that drink. All right, here we go. I've got an induction burner here uh, that I'm going to put all of this together in today. And this is something that you could certainly, um, you know, you could heat this in your Traeger if you want. Uh, we don't cook inside at the meat church, so we try to do everything outside. It's a lot more fun. Weather's good. Get your family involved. So definitely encourage you guys to do everything you can outside. But um, you could mix this together cool, but better to put hot sauces on proteins when you're cooking them not bring the temperature down so we're going to mix this together uh, on the induction burner plus it helps the flavors meld together and really you know really make sure it's mixed um, thoroughly so um, again this is in the Traeger app look up the tequila lime chicken 
and you'll see all the ingredients that we're about to put together here. Um, we have actually doubled the recipe that's in the app just because I put a bunch of chicken on. Um, you know, if I'm gonna fire up my grill, I'm gonna make it worthwhile and we're gonna cook a lot. And so I, you know, just put quite a bit of this sauce um, together today, but enough talking, let me kind of throw this together. So starting out with, again, doubled. So eight tablespoons of clover honey. This is actually from Burles. This is Burleson's honey, local here in Waxahachie. How many people are we shooting for with this recipe? Ooh, that's a tough question. How many people are we shooting for with this recipe? Uh, eight tablespoons of uh, pineapple. Man, I, you know, normally I'm cooking for four to six, but you can see I put, I don't know, more than a dozen thighs on here, so I'm, I'm going a little heavy. Uh, we're putting in some, putting in some butter here. See if I can get it out of here. Okay. Some red pepper flakes, a little heat. This is three tablespoons of hot sauce. This is actually truff hot sauce, but that's not important, but they sent me some and it's good, so I'm going with it. Some freshly squeezed lime juice, also three tablespoons. And last but not least, same amount of tequila. Whew. Let me tell you, I go with a good tequila. It's my buddy Thomas Rett's Dos Primos. It's pretty new. If you watch Traeger Day, uh, TR and I did smash burgers uh, and we had some ranch waters with this, so that's actually what's in my drink as well. And we'll make a ranch water here, um, here in just a little bit. So there's that. So let me uh, get to stir in this and let this come together and ask some questions. So you spoke earlier of involving the family and things like that um, with your family and just in general with you. How many days a week do you normally smoke or barbecue? Great question. So question is how I talked about my, getting my family involved. Thank you, sir. Uh, how often do I cook? We try to cook every meal outside. So, I mean, I could safely say that six days a week. I mean, we do go out to eat often on Wednesdays. Our kids have church on Wednesday, and that's when my wife and I try to sneak away um, to go hang out together for at least an hour and a half a week. Um, my family's pretty crazy, so good to get away from them, get away from our little kids for 90 minutes. Uh, a week, but for sure, grilling, smoking five days a week, if not six. Um, I've cooked my butt off lately. I I pretty much cook constantly. Went out of town. I was in Nashville the last 24 hours, so I didn't cook that day. But uh, as soon as I get back, I'm back at it. It's kind of what I do. So I I cook to an extreme amount. What else we got? I think we might need to get a little a teaser for the next recipe. This question is: that straight Topo Chico? Like uh, or is it with lime? I think they didn't. Yeah, so I won't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on and tell you how I make this ranch water in a little bit, but this is actually the lime version of Topo Chico. So here at our grocery store, we can get regular lime or grapefruit. And since I put lime in my ranch water, I buy the lime Topo more than anything else, to be honest with you. And I put, there's two limes floating in there, so there's actually lime in that, but we'll get to that after we make our guac. What else we got? I'm gonna I'm gonna build my guac here in in just a minute. I just want this to kind of melt and start coming together. Um, I'm gonna reduce this by about a third. So I've got this kind of on medium heat, and uh, I'm gonna let this kind of go uh, while I get on to making the guac here in just a second. While we're on the beverage, um, is there anything that you might recommend subbing in the uh, ranch water instead of tequila? So the question is, is there anything you can sub in the ranch water other than tequila? Yes. Uh, in fact, um, I work with TX Whiskey here out of Fort Worth, and they actually make a ranch water with whiskey. Uh, so if you're a whiskey drinker, the same recipe I'm going to show you uh, can be applied with whiskey. Traditionally made with tequila, but, man, this smells super good. You're just going to have to take my word for it. Okay, I'm going to get on to making a little bit of guac here. We start getting our ingredients out anyway. Pico, Pico. Got any more questions yet? Yeah, I got a couple kind of relative to chicken. Um, 
and this kind of goes back to before we were talking about taking the skin off. If we were to be cooking this with skin, is there anything advice that you have to avoid getting rubbery skin? Really good question. So if we were, if we were cooking with the skin on, um, anything we could do to avoid rubbery skin. There's a lot of things you can do. Uh, first tip that I give everyone is to air dry your chicken in the refrigerator. Uh, so what I mean by that is, is I take my chicken, whether, or poultry in general, can be a whole chicken, can be a whole turkey, can be parts, pieces, but like say today, thighs. Get yourself uh, a baking rack or a cooling rack, little grids, and you get them on Amazon, like, you know, three in a pack for 15 or 10 bucks or something like that, and then put a sheet pan underneath it. Um, a little hot over here. We got a little above a simmer. Um, and then lay your chicken on that, put it in the refrigerator overnight. Uh, I can tell you, like, my wife is not, like, thrilled when I do that, but help dry the skin out quite a bit helps. Another thing, there's a couple other things you can do. Uh, one is leverage cornstarch in your seasoning. So there's cornstarch trick where you can just put cornstarch on the skin. Um, some people will just put a little cornstarch also with their seasoning. That helps dry it out. And then, you know, the thing obviously with the grill is you can um, increase the temperature of your grill. So this is like a constant talk I have with my wife. You know, if you're smoking chicken, like say you're smoking chicken wings, you're going to be low, like 225, 250. The lower you are, the more smoke you can impart into the chicken. Well, the rubbery their skin is going to become. And I often have to remind her, we are smoking chicken. We're not frying it. So if you don't employ some of those techniques, dry it out, cornstarch, really high heat, uh, buying air dried, uh, air chilled chicken, I should say. Um, those are things that you have to do to try to get crispy skin. But, you know, this method we're going with a 375 for 30 minutes with, um, you know, these thighs, I don't know that the skin would be very dry or, you know, very crispy after that, to be honest with you. Don't, don't expect to bite through it and it'd be like you're eating Kentucky Fried Chicken. So just have realistic expectations and, base, you know, tweak your methods accordingly. Can I parlay that question a little bit more? Sure. So, I like parlays. I'm a gambling man. <laughs> so, like, I, I know from a perspective of watching these things and trying new things, you're always curious if you're doing things right or wrong. And one of the questions earlier was, did you brine the chicken for the day? And I know we didn't brine this chicken for the day, but um, what are your benefits of brining? And should we have brined the chicken and left the skin on? Yeah, that's... How can, will we just do that prior to? Great question. Uh, brining. I mean, and I sell a brine. Um, I always think brining is a good um, practice if you have the time. And that's true whether you're making chicken wings, whole chickens, or anything in between. And I don't go with anything too complex. I'm not saying you have to buy the Meat Church birdbath brine, but, you know, make yourself an old-school salt brine, you know, where you can get kind of equal parts um, chicken, I'm sorry, um, uh, salt, sugar, uh, a little bit of seasoning, your favorite seasoning, and a gallon of water, and submerge your chicken in. If you're doing whole chicken, you know, I like six to eight hours. If you're doing parts, you can get away with four hours. But anything you can do to impart moisture into your chicken, especially if you're cooking at a high heat, um, I think it's great. I mean, I can relate that to frying for sure. Like if you fry poultry uh, in the fall, I definitely think you should brine it. Anything you can do to put a little more moisture in it uh, is good. This is, this is reducing a little, so I'm just kind of dropping the temp uh, just a little bit. One more question before I make the guac. Yeah, so this one's, um, I've got a couple that I'm going to throw in and we get back on the chicken, but just for now, um, do you have any, any more live events planned? So the question is, do I have any more live events planned? We've been on quite a roll between April and May, and tonight is actually my last event for a little bit. Um, we're going to try to take a little bit of a break. Our kids just got out of school, and as I mentioned earlier, um, my family and Michael's family, we're going to head down to our lake house for Memorial Day, and uh, I, with any luck, I won't come back till August. That's not true. I'll, I'll be back for sure, but I don't have anything planned right now. It's not for any shortage of offers, but honestly, it's time to just hang out with the family and enjoy the summer a little bit, so um, we're hoping not to have anything, but when we do schedule events, they're all on meatchurch.com. We have an event and appearance tab, and I schedule everything right there. So the second we do schedule something, we'll put it on there. No doubt we'll do another Traeger Kitchen Live, um, and we'll have all the details on there. 
there's been a question earlier about your uh, upcoming in-person classes. Is that a great place for those to find the, for people? Yeah, to so lo those? lots of questions about our in-person classes. We did two about a month ago on a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it was pretty talked about. They sold out the second tickets went on sale. They're right here. This is my backyard. It might not look like we're outside, but that's my swimming pool. That's my house. Um, we host them here. So family has to leave. Pretty invasive. Uh, we do two types of classes. We do one at a brewery, or I'm sorry, a distillery, TX Whiskey, but they've been closed because they make their product there. Now um, their ownership is restricting those, or uh, releasing those requirements, and they're opening back up, and we'll schedule live classes there. But this one here is like our most exclusive. You're at my house, in my backyard, having my food that I cook for you. Uh, so we don't have any more of those scheduled either right now, but there's no doubt we will. We just are going to take a little bit off after like a pretty heavy run. We're so focused on making our YouTube videos right now, which are like all the talk and barbecue. Uh, so we, we spend our time doing that. And we'll get to the live stuff um, a little bit later in the year. And we'll put it all on meetchurch.com. Uh, you can also sign up for um, our newsletter at the bottom of meetchurch.com. Uh, and that's where we email folks first. You know what? I'm going to glaze this chicken before I make the guac because it's been one minute short of 15 minutes. So that'll be a good segue to, to get that done. While you're messing with the chicken, um, a question came in. Is it true the corn the meat, the more smoke it takes? The what the meat? The colder the temperature of the meat. Oh, the colder. Smoke, uh, I don't buy. So the question was the colder the meat, the more smoke. Does it take on more smoke? I don't buy into that. Um, there's, you know, a lot of talk about should you throw a brisket on cold or should you let it come out and come to room temperature? If there's science behind that, it's not something that I mess with, to be honest with you. So not something that, that I've done previously. And this stuff's probably tough for y'all to see. I know we have an overhead shot, but uh, this, this tequila lime sauce smells amazing. It's obviously a very thin sauce but dude it smells super good and with that red pepper this is going to be really really good as you guys peek in here i'm actually going to sauce both sides while i'm in here i'm going to sauce this side flip them sauce the other then we'll make this smoke guac and this is just building another layer of flavor really big into Anything you can do to continue to add those layers. God, this smells so, so good. You can fire away, Michael, if you want while I do this. 14 pies. <coughs> Woo. Okay, good question. Are any of my rubs sugar-free? Two of them are. Our fajita seasoning. Man, that red pepper is getting me. Our fajita seasoning and our holy cow are both sugar-free. Yes, I use the fajita here. I'm going to use it again in a minute in the guac. Um, I feel like sugar is a key part to a balanced barbecue rub. That's why it's in there. But I've got a couple options without it. We also have a gourmet line with a seasoned salt, a garlic and herb, a seafood seasoning, a lemon pepper. The three of those four don't have sugar either. You brought up the seafood. Uh, got a question. <coughs> Woo! There are seafood seasoning. There are seafood recipes on meatchurch.com. There is a halibut recipe, um, which I'm dying to get back to because my buddy Ben, Expedition Barbecue in Alaska, just brought me some halibut. Um, also, there is a salmon recipe on there, which is the opposite of healthy. My recipe is opposite of healthy. You end up dousing it in grade A maple syrup and uh, lots of copious amounts of butter. There's also a smoked fish dip recipe on there, which is amazing. Um, there's also a grilled oyster recipe. But, good question, timely, after our hardcore barbecue series, we are committed to making a bunch of videos uh, with fish at our lake house. So there's gonna be more coming up. So there's some out there, but more coming. And Traeger's website and Traeger's app is, are loaded with seafood recipes. Yeah, I mean, look, so you guys can see the grill marks. I could have left these longer, but... Now, I'm losing a lot of temperature being in this Timberline uh, sauce in these for so long, but the good news is these grills recover so quickly. 
Um, so I may have to go a little longer in the second stage, but we'll, we'll check that as time goes. How many of these am I going to check? Well, these are various sizes, so I'm going to I'm going to check them in a couple places. I'm, I'm going to check several thighs. Like this thigh in particular is quite small um, compared to the one next to it. You know, a couple of these, like these, are much smaller than that one, that one, that one. So we've dropped down to we dropped down 100 degrees. I'm going to I'm going to turn this down low. I'll probably use some more of that later. Um, we'll just let that kind of sit there and stay warm and. Might put some more on, on at the end. But let's get on to the guac and the drink. Doing good on time. All right. So there's a little bit of latitude um, with making guac. And I've deviated a little bit from the smoked guac recipe on the Traeger site and Traeger app. But I'll talk about that. So I've got three very large avocados um, that we put on the Traeger. We cut them in half, uh, took the seed out, and we had them in for 15 minutes at 180 degrees to impart some smoke in them. Clearly not, you know, a ton necessarily, um, but they're, they've softened up. So, and I'm going to leave this kind of chunky. The, the, the notable difference in what I'm going to do and what was on the, the Traeger site is, and this is something that could impart some more uh, some more smoke flavor is they have a grilled corn aspect. So grill some corn at a, at a really high heat and, uh, and, and take that off the cob. I've, I've just elected not to do that, uh, but that would obviously impart some more smokiness in it. But I'm going to keep it more traditional um, here and kind of to what we do in Texas. So we're going to mainly work with these avocados. I don't normally measure a whole heck of a lot, but the app you know, calls for you to, you're obviously you're going to use things like your, your traditional ingredients are going to be tomatoes, red onion, garlic, um, you know, some seasoning. And so we've, I kind of got a lot of that ready in advance, which I'll show you that here in just a second. So we spent some time thinking about like how far in advance of the show should we do this. And by the way, the only reason we didn't do this part while that was cooking is I didn't want to blast these avocados at 375 degrees. Otherwise, I clearly had the time uh, to do this smoky, or, you know, grill these to put the smokiness in it during class. But we did this at 180 degrees. Uh, so we did that a little bit earlier or li literally just finished it. Like I pulled them off in the seconds before we, we went live. The scene here of Traeger Kitchen Live in the seconds before we go live is like a restaurant before it opens. It's pandemonium. All right, so I'm just coring this stuff out. Um, we make our guac and eat it all immediately. We don't store it. If you do want to store it, then keep the seed and keep the seed in the guac. Uh, you can also put a little citrus juice, a little lime on top of it and wrap it very tight um, to hold it. But in this case, and I'm just using this cheap little spoon to, I'm, I'm trying to keep this kind of chunky. I'm just going to kind of mash this up before I uh, actually go to put other stuff in. Our grill is recovering nicely. It's already at 353 degrees, so got to love a Timberline. Um, you know, fully insulated grill. It's, you know, still my favorite grill since the day it came out. It just, I, I've had, you know, I supposedly got the very first 1300 that ever came in the country, and I've literally not had one issue with a Timberline. They just get to temp quick, hold the temp, and I uh, love it. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. It's looking really good, actually. Okay, I've um, also, I grilled uh, some jalapeno, jalapenos that you could probably tell have uh, my seasoning on them. We put some of our some of our voodoo on here. So a little bit of smokiness in this as well. 
Now, a uh, little tip. If you don't want the heat, which this is a lot of avocado, so it's, it's, you know, it's gonna take a lot to make it hot. If you want to adjust the heat, the key here is to remove the stems, not the seeds. The seeds being the heat source is a misnomer. It's actually the capsation in a pepper is actually in the, the vein stems, the veins inside of there. So if you wanna really get rid of the heat, do that. And this is also a slight tweak to the Traeger recipe. The recipe calls to use poblanos. And if you wanna use a poblano, that's a great option. It's a really, I think a little more of a smoky option. Um, you would put those, put, put one large poblano in the grill, grill it hot, you know, for 15, 20 minutes. And then when you're done with that, you could put it in a bowl, wrap it in like cellophane and, uh, and that will help that skin, uh, you'll blister that skin and this, you can just peel the skin right off the poblano. Um, and that's a great option and I like poblanos. But in, in Texas, uh, jalapeno is, is very traditional. Uh, it's got a little more bite. Jalapenos aren't considered hot in my opinion and I'm a guy that grew up in the deep south and I'll be honest with you, I can't hang with just like super, super hot. Well, this is not gonna be, this isn't gonna be real hot. Uh, and like I said, here's all that stuff I took out right there will help you. If you want it to be hotter, um, leave all of that goodness in there when you dice it up. Um, hell, put a Serrano in there if you want. If you want some, you know, or, you know, uh, habanero is what I meant to say, not a Serrano, if you really want more heat. So you can control uh, the temperature level in there. I'm going to go ahead and just dump this in. I don't think that measuring this is really all that important. And... If I measured it, I would be lying to you because I don't think I've ever measured what I put in here. And the only reason I'm not gonna put this one in is I kind of, I pre-made some where I took some vine-ripe tomatoes. I love to use Romas, but I didn't like the looks of the Romas at the store. Uh, I took a little bit of, um, I used white onion because it's what I had, a little bit of cilantro, uh, and there's jalapeno in here, which is just by habit. This is kind of a pico, but this is there's not a lot of green in this. I have a pico recipe on meatchurch.com, and this is a little different, but this is primarily, like I said, uh, tomato, uh, white onion, red onion works great, um, jalapeno and cilantro. And I'm not measuring this. I've said that 400 times. That's not the important factor. Can I throw in something? Oh, and there's garlic. Sorry, there's, gar there's minced garlic in it. Question. So with the smoked um, jalapeno or poblano, whatever you chose, um, that looks like something that you could do ahead of time in preparation for this. Um, could you smoke the avocados ahead of time and make the guac later? And if so, how do you keep them fresh and, and this color? The question is, can you smoke the avocados in advance? I kind of brought that up a minute ago. That's something that we didn't want to do too far in advance because they're going to turn. Yeah, I know I'm using my hand, but I'm not at a restaurant. I'm at my house, and I'm going to eat this, so that'll be all right. Um, you know, we literally smoked these, grilled these, whatever, right before we went live. Because we, once, once you cut an avocado, that pulp is going to turn fast. Uh, unless you keep a seed near it, maybe a little bit of uh, lime juice on it, and... Uh, you know, so I, I didn't, I did not do that in advance. I mean, but at the end of the day, it's probably not a huge deal if your skin turns because you could just slightly take off that top edge. Um, you got to have fresh lime juice. This is going to be difficult. I usually do this to taste, so I'll, I'll taste it. Um, Here in a minute before I go anymore. I didn't bring the chips. They're dropping. I got them. I always forget something on set, but I don't need them quite yet. This actually looks really, really good. Um, I'm probably gonna put a little more of this in. Just cause. Okay. Now, seasoning wise, I'll use a garlic salt often, but I put a ton of garlic in this, so I'm not doing that today. I'm actually just putting more of our fajita seasoning in it. Uh, and I told you there's, this is salt, pepper, garlic, onion, citrus. So there's, this is a salty rub. So we're not gonna need any more salt. This will be good. And this is great. Um, 
I told you this is a staple. This is one of those things even my picky kids will eat. Bring a little bit more. All right. Now chips are coming in quicker than an Amazon order. All right, that's looking super good. We just gotta make our drink and let our chicken keep rolling here for a few minutes. Look at that, I'm telling you, not even Amazon is that quick. So I'm not trying to eat yet, but I wanna make sure this is perfect. <laughs> Nailed it. That's good. You know what? All right, I'm not gonna be a wuss today. We're gonna put more of this smoked jalapeno in, then we're gonna make our drink. Well, that's actually like really good, um, but I'm gonna add even more of this. I got a little bit nervous because I already had a bunch of jalapeno in this that I put together earlier. You guys, you got questions while I put this last in? Traeger maintenance question, if you're willing. Traeger maintenance question. I will certainly try. Okay, before we get there, this one just came in. It's pretty oh, relevant. Okay. Jalapeno smoked at the same temp as the avocado? Question was, the jalapeno smoked at the same temp as the avocado? Actually, I smoked these longer. Um, so a little more hardy than an avocado, so I think it could, it could be on there a little longer. Um, we actually smoked limes, which I'll talk about in just a minute with a cocktail. Uh, for about an hour um, at 225 degrees. So I actually took advantage of that time and how I had the jalapenos on then. So they, they were in a lot longer. That's why they look pretty wrinkled and um, they'd been on there quite a bit because I knew they could take it. Whereas the avocado after an hour would have looked terrible. So like as a backyard grilling guy, or, um, you're always wondering if your method's right, if you're doing the right things, if you miss something. One of the cool <coughs> things Trader does is is give you that little notification at, um, on the screen. Fire boxes don't clean themselves. Fire pots don't clean themselves. Um, so with that in reality, this question is, how often do you actually clean your trailer? And what does that look like for you? Great question. So yes, I'm. Um, how often do I clean my Traeger? I love the fact that the app, or that the, the screen says fire pots don't clean themselves. People don't clean their Traegers enough. Um, I have a little shop vac that uh, literally is just for my Traegers. So no, it exists for no other reason than to clean my Traegers. And so I vac it out every three cooks or so, basically. I'm gonna make that pretty. Um, and then the biggest thing is I check my grease, uh, on Timberline grease obviously in the middle, on the inside hidden, the, the, the um, you call it the tray where the grease runs through. I check it before every cook. And if you don't, you could get yourself in trouble. Um, you know, it's not real fun to clean that uh, during a cook or have to clean it during a cook. But, you know, that's honestly how grease fires happen. I think a lot of us grew up with this misnomer, misconception that um, buildup in a grill is flavor. And that's not true. Buildup in a grill is a grease fire waiting to happen. Uh, one of the best competition cooks in the world takes his competition pit after competition. He sprays the inside of it out at a, at a commercial car wash. So don't let anything build up in it. Clean your grill regularly. And if your grill ever catches on fire, that's your fault, not Traeger's. Metal and wood don't catch on fire. Um, dirty grills from lazy people catch on fire. So. And have you ever had the experience, because I know I have, where don't realize your grill's really dirty because you've done a lot of smoking until you go to cook that steak at 450. Oh, yeah. And that reflective heat from the fire pot is what catches that grease on fire. So it's yeah, so you gotta, important to kind of stay on top of that. Super important to stay on top of it. All right, let's make, let me, let me, let me tempt these thighs real quick and then let's make a drink. like 160 so um 
I'm going to give them about a minute, and then I'm going to pull them. A tray for that? Um, they're just about there, and then we're going to put those in a tray, set those aside, and we're going to be ready to eat. But before I do that, fresh flour tortillas. I'm going to heat up these tortillas real quick. We're gonna make tacos at the end. Uh, you know, you know. I don't care if you go corn or flour. I'm a big fan of either. Um, I, I used to say corn's more traditional here, and you know, really that just comes down to whatever you like. So, put them on whatever you like. We're gonna shred some of this chicken, um, and we're gonna we're gonna make tacos here in just a minute. But we're gonna work on a on a cocktail in the meantime. So let's make some smoked ranch water. All right. Um, okay, ranch water crazy hot right now but extremely traditional here in texas and it's very simple um you know obviously we're we're rocking some uh topo chico mineral water here but ranch water is you know mineral water uh tequila and fresh lime juice and that's that's all there is to it um <clears throat> and now you're starting to see all these ranch waters in the market that I'll tell you, a lot of them aren't even really ranch water. There's a lot of cans that are basically seltzers. They're not even spirits. So, you know, not to hate on what anybody likes, but uh, if you go uh, to the store and you think you're buying a ranch water in a can, I'm gonna warn you, you need to read the can because the white ones that say ranch water aren't even tequila. Um, it's like, I jokingly say, tell my buddies, like drinking a Bartles and James. Um, but it's like a wine base. It's not spirits. There's a product called Ranch Rider that has actual tequila in it, um, which is harder to find because you have to go to a liquor store. You can't buy it at a gas station. Um, but that's where you want to go. Woo. I'm going to pull these thighs off so they don't overcook, then we're going to make this drink. Don't let me forget those tortillas because that will happen for sure. All right, let's make this drink real quick. I'm going to show you a couple ways you can mix it, but um, we got our sonic ice here because, you know, why would you not use sonic ice? But get your shaker full of ice. This is kind of awkward. Okay, so we've got some uh, margarita salt here, but I thought, you know what? Margarita salt is worthless. What you need is a real drink rimmer known as Meat Church Holy Voodoo. Ranch water, margaritas, Bloody Marys. Just trust me on this part. All right, first, uh, let's rim our glass here. I'm going to... Uh, slice open this lime. Okay, you want to rim your glass. This, like I said, this applies if it's margarita, um, Bloody Mary, ranch water, whatever. Lime juice, and then most people salt uh, like a margarita, but no. And the, the Traeger recipe calls to use blackened Saskatchewan, which I'm a huge fan of. That makes a really pretty drink with a black rim. So I, I'm a big, big fan of that. But I'm Meat Church, and we are you know, known for our seasoning. So Traeger is gracious enough to let us use our stuff, and we certainly appreciate that. Stick my hand down in here. All right. There we go. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I mean, it's one more of those or no? Okay, that's fine. 
quite all right. Okay. Uh, we're going to grab some more uh, topo just real quick. We're, I'm going to mess up my set dressing here, so we're going to we're going to leave those sitting here. While this is, I mentioned this is the lime version. I'm actually going to show you a regular version as well. Um, and then, actually, while we wait on that, what we can do is we can start with our lime juice. So this is six ounces of mineral water, uh, three ounces of tequila, and a squeeze of lime. Um, we cut limes in half. We seasoned it with holy voodoo. And we smoked these on a Traeger at 250 degrees for about an hour. That's what we did the jalapenos with um, as well. So let me put that together real quick. You can hand me that. Thank you. So here's a regular one that we can use as well. And, I mean, you know, we don't measure anything here. So call that six ounces. Let's bust, up, bust out my boy Thomas Rett's Dos Primos. Three ounces of this. Whew. Three heavy ounces of this. And let's put some of the smoked lime juice in. I'm gonna go uh, with my little squeezer here. Whoo, squirter. Man, y'all just have to take my word for that. That was a good one. When you smoke them, they get, <laughs> there's a lot of pulp in there. Uh, they, get, they get going. So, okay, here we go. Pick it up. Mineral water's gonna explode on you. All right, shake it up. Look at that. That is gonna be good. The questions why, why I make these? Handy tortilla reminder. Woo yeah, they were puffing up. Told you I'd forget them. All right. Let those sit. Chicken need to cool just a hair anyway. Obviously, you want to garnish with a little lime wedge. And then, you know, told you, you can make it the other way as well, um, which would be drink the neck out of a topo, pour your tequila in, throw in a couple limes, and just drink it right out of the bottle. Well, I'm gonna save these limes uh, for my tacos. We're gonna get to building those and time to eat. Let's put all this together. Okay. There's that. I am excited to be here tonight. You know, we're kind of loosening up a little bit after we've all been vaccinated here at my place and got a few friends hanging out watching this tonight. So this has been nice and refreshing and, and good to be with you all tonight. We got some folks wondering what all we're cooking this weekend for Memorial Day. Uh, oh man, what are we cooking? Whew. Well, that is a good question. Uh, kind of already tipped us off, I guess. So uh, Michael and I are building a cinder block pit tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we'll cover all of this on Meat Church Instagram for sure. And then what's yours, Michael Dot Letchworth? Come on. Oh man, my time. Michael Dot F Dot Letchworth Dot. That's a lot of dots in the Instagram handle. We'll be covering this cinder block pit build. We're smoking 135 pound compart Duroc hog. Um, Got brisket, beef ribs. Uh, we're gonna make beef rib queso uh, and all sorts of shenanigans. Oh yeah, pit chickens. We're gonna do like, come on. Oh, y'all wanna see these chickens? Before you move on, you've done such a good job of polishing that beautiful rosewood block. <coughs> Are they ever gonna be available online? <laughs> <laughs> People wanna know: Is this is this block ever gonna be available online? Well, here's the deal. So Rosewood Block is a very small company out of Arkansas. My buddy Tyler Rose owns a company. We've collaborated together, and we've built my signature block. We sell these in our store in Waxhatchee. We're trying to make it a destination shop. But the bigger deal is we're just not set up to ship these big bad boys. He is, and we spoke this week, and what we've decided to do at some point this year, we will do a limited drop that we will announce and say, all right, we have 25 or we have 30. First come, first serve, and we're going to ship them from his facility. So you'll just have to stay tuned to meet church. We will have them at some point. Not, not full time. 
Uh, we just, two small businesses, uh, you know, the truth is we just don't have uh, the facility or capacity to, to roll with that full time all the time. So, you know what, I'm going to put these back here. All right, I'm going to, um, I'm going to just kind of shred some of this chicken with a knife um, real quick while we're um, getting ready to build some tacos. This stuff's still pretty hot, so if I cut it like this, I can try to get it to cool off a little bit because as I've learned with YouTube videos, you're not going to be happy unless I eat my creation and tell you how it tastes. So here we go. I would pull this too, but I figured this might be a little bit quicker. So here we go. What other questions y'all got? Fire them away while I'm getting this stuff ready. Um, here, here's a great and just simple one. How do we follow you on Traeger Insta? How do you follow well, me? How do we follow you? Is it on Traeger Insta? How do we get Meat Church? How do, how do you get, get Okay, how do you follow Meat Church? Thank you for asking that. Uh, we're known for our Instagram for sure. We'll, we're close to half a million followers on Instagram, so love to have you guys on there. It's at Meat Church. Uh, we're on all platforms. Um, you know, obviously Facebook, uh, you know, my least favorite Twitter. Just recently launched on TikTok, which is like, ugh, I, I can't believe we actually are doing that. But, you know, got to do what you got to do um, in this business. But Instagram, meatchurch.com. You can go in there. You can find, you can buy stuff direct from us. You can find dealer locator. We're in almost 2,000 stores. So find something near you guys, no matter where you're at in the world. Support our local dealers. Um, but yeah, that's where you can find us. Speaking of local, um, somebody's asking where that meat church sign is from. Can they buy it? Uh, not, uh, um, That's a really good question. I don't think anybody's asked that in a long time. So, are they for sale? This sign is from Saw and Steel in Arizona, another small business. I'm, you know, big time small business guy, and um, they are friends of ours in Arizona that I met through teaching barbecue in Sweden. Uh, my buddy Johan there has a really cool, huge barbecue marquee. He hooked me up with them, and uh, they made this sign, and they also made one in our own store. They'll make you whatever you want. So you can find them on Instagram, Saul and Steel. Saul and S-T-E-E-L. I got some rapid fires for you right at the end that are uh, a little, not off topic, but different meat. Okay, yeah. We're dealing with tonight. Go for it. Um, okay, so this is a little bit more relevant. You guys can ask questions while I'm building these amazing smelling tacos. Favorite recipe with holy voodoo. Favorite recipe with holy voodoo, man. Chicken wings, hard to beat. Turkey at Thanksgiving, hard to beat. Uh, we've kind of figured out holy voodoo's like uh, an all purpose. It's our number one rub, so there's not a lot that's not good on eggs, Bloody Marys, rims on ranch waters. I've almost squeezed in every question. All right, I so, love it. Um, so you said wings. If we're smoking chicken wings, can you grill them afterwards to crisp them up uh, as far as the skin goes? If you're smoking, can you grill after? Yeah, you can. Um, I'll tell you something I like to do is flash fry them after. A smoke fried ring, wing, um, smoke them in your Traeger, flash fry them, great option. Something I like to do. That's what we do in the restaurant. Um, all right, this comes to a different color. By the way, chicken. <laughs> Lights <laughs> out. <laughs> if that chicken was a lamb, what rub would you have put on it? If that chicken was a lamb, I would have put um, holy cow on it. Um, What's that spoon out? Do you cook wagyu briskets any different than you would a, uh, a prime brisket? Do I cook wagyu briskets any different than I cook a prime brisket? No, except wagyu briskets are like you are often done at a higher internal temperature. So if a prime brisket is tender, at, let's just say 203 degrees. Um, a Wagyu is often done closer to 210. You want them just to be probe tender, and they do cook a little quicker often because of the fat content. Um, I'm, I'm just going to just slam this pico right on top of these tequila lime chicken thighs. And hey, if you wanted to ladle more of this sauce on here, I definitely think that would have been a good idea um, if you really you know want to add more flavor, but I like how these are tasting right now. All right, speaking of that sauce and your encouragement to get your family outside and cooking, should someone want to do that, is there an induction burner that you recommend? Yeah, so is there an induction burner I recommend? We cook uh, things like this in a couple ways. This is a Volrath, wasn't very expensive, that I got like at a restaurant supply store. Um, we also have, my buddy Don bought a 
a little Carolina cooker, a little gas cooker that we put Dutch ovens on. It was only like 20 bucks. So a couple options for you for something like that. Chefs need options and Traeger knows that it's okay for you to have some other things that you know aren't inside the Traeger and like little cheap options like this just make life easier sometimes. I'm topping these with uh, cotija cheese because that's what we do in Texas. Man, that's a, that's a bowl full. Whew, I mean, come on now. Look at this. And don't forget this extra chicken right here. Okay, moment of truth. Is this going to be any good? Well, let's see. God, I made those big. That's what you gotta do. Look at that. By the way, that chicken is super juicy. Um, I mean, the smells are amazing, and I love how all this came together. Uh, your Taco Tuesday will never be the same again, so cheers. Now I'm taking my word for it. My buddy Kirk, who does our videos, always tells me not to take a second bite. They're that good. I have to balance that with Traeger telling me to take the uncomfortable bite, so, man. Okay. All BS aside, that's super good, super easy. Chicken thighs are where it's at. They're juicy, without being brined, <clears throat> full of flavor. Um, you know, the, the fajita seasoning on there reminds me of, like, it's like making fajitas. Um, guacamole, super good. I mean, like I said, you could have put even more of that sauce on there you want, but this was simple. This was fun to make. Get your family involved in it. Um, I like to have my kids make the guacamole. That's something they like doing. And then, hey, the payoff pitch right here. Ooh. That was a lot of tequila. <laughs> but that's good. That's refreshing. Um, but the bite of the holy voodoo, by the way, I told you, you guys got to try this. You got to put the voodoo on the rim of your margarita or your Bloody Mary or your ranch water this weekend. Um, the spite is sweet and spicy. So that little bite in there is, is a cool compliment to the sweetness in the drink. So, so we've talked about Man. how to connect with you on um, social media. We talked about new, um, the current items we're using, but the question is, do you have anything new coming out? What's, what's up for me, church? What's coming out? We have anything new coming out. We get asked that a lot lately. <clears throat> we got a few things we're working on <clears throat> that we can't really talk about right now, and I hate to say that, but um, Traeger and I have something up our sleeve that is going to be amazing later in the year, so you're just going to have to sit tight and wait and trust me on that. Um, we are very close to our summer merch drop, so we drop spring, summer, and fall merch. So if you watch meetchurch.com, um, you can get, well, I don't have any of it on today, but uh, we have lots of new cool shirts. Um, and tanks and hats and, and some other stuff uh, coming. We have like really cool sunglasses we put out there, like a sleeper, dang sunglasses. All my uh, friends at Traeger know dang out of Salt Lake City, but they're actually very cool. They're not just some promo glasses with our name on them. Um, but there's cool stuff coming. I can't tip you off right now, but stay tuned to meetchurch.com and you'll see it soon. Any final questions? I've got one that's, the, I, I really honestly think I've hit almost all of them. I'm sure I left something out, but um, where's ranch water found? Where's ranch water found? <clears throat> well, uh, make it yourself. But it's very common here in Texas. It's uh, it's an old school drink is what I'll call it. But it's enjoyed a bit of a renaissance in the past year because I will give the kind of seltzer companies credit for this. Someone that worked at an ad agency went out and created a ranch water that, like I said earlier, is not really ranch water. But now that, you know, when you act Texas or Western or country, whatever, like, I think people feel cool with that name. And so you can find those in stores, but they're not the same thing unless you buy Ranch Rider. Um, but make this yourself, right? It was, it was two to one uh, mineral water to tequila would squeeze a lime and you're in business. And it's that easy and it's refreshing. And it is my wife's daily drink. So ladies, don't be scared to try it. Well... Was that all our questions? Yeah? I think I've done a superior job. You've done an amazing job. Thank you again oh, to Michael Letchworth of Sam Jones Barbecue. Um, uh, you know what? Oh. I got, you, you want me to hit you with all the randoms? Any tips for cooking want... a Vegas strip steak? That's not getting answered. That's a, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's when I know my brother's involved. Is that your brother? 
I don't know. Probably. Um, what is the best way to get a good crust on chicken or ribeye? Last one. Last question. Good way to get a crust on uh, on a ribeye is to sear it in cast iron. Um, there's a lot of ways to cook a steak, tons of ways to skin a cat, but my absolute favorite is to sear on cast iron because I want maximum coverage. So, you know, put it, whether you put it in your Traeger or somewhere else, blast that cast iron at the end uh, and put that steak in there. It can be in a dry skillet. You don't have to have oil or butter or anything. Put a bacon press on top of it, put a little pressure on it and get kind of a maximum hard sear. Uh, and that's the best way for a ribeye for me. Well, that's it. I mean, we're, you know, pretty well right on time. So I personally appreciate uh, you guys uh, tuning in tonight. Or if you're watching this down the road on the post, you know, thanks for watching. If you have more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Meetchurch.com. Go to the bottom, sign up for the mailing list. That's where we send our latest and greatest every single week. Um, hope you guys have a great time cooking outside for Memorial Day. I always tell everybody, remember what Memorial Day is about. I know people like to get together and probably have a party and have a good time, but definitely remember those that paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, to serve our country, and that's what this weekend's all about. But with that said, I know you all will be outside grilling or smoking. Um, if you're cooking with Meat Church or with Traeger, please tag us so we can see what you're up to. Um, we love to get involved and comment on, uh, on what you're cooking on. But follow us on Instagram. We're going to start posting the story tomorrow as we cook um, this pig uh, through Saturday. So we're super excited to do that. And see you guys next time.